Hey everybody, Ron here. Hope everyone's having a good uh, Thursday. I know we're kind of snowed in, but uh, j uh, just leave that right there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But we're here for another Fallout Hobbies live stream. I'm going to be having a little bit of fun with some day glow colors today. As always, Jules is here. Hey guys, what's up? So if you have any questions, comments, you know, just ask them and we'll answer them in real time. And uh, yeah, let's get started. I'm just going to have a little bit of fun here. So I picked up a bunch of these like UV reacting colors, which are really awesome. And I recently rewatched Avatar with my son and kind of got inspired a little bit to do some kind of organic bioluminescent looking creature. So I'm going to be doing that. This is going to be a two, uh, a two week video. We're just going to do a little bit of experimentation today. Um, I'm going to kind of like test out some different colors. I'm also going to be pulling some inspiration from some like deep sea creatures and some African tree frogs. Now, now you could hand me the, the laptop. Gotcha. Thank you. So I have my laptop off to the side with a bunch of, uh, you know, tree frog references and stuff like that, you know, to help with the, the ideas. And I'm just kind of going to get into it and see what happens. I think the first thing that I, I'm going to take my ring off. I don't want to get paint on my ring. And it's also cold as hell up here today. My legs are about frozen when we got done shoveling snow. Yes, and we had to shovel snow for like an hour and a half this morning. So we're drinking coffee with whiskey in it to warm ourselves up. Oh, Are we sure or is that kind of just like an excuse? We're just going to run with it. Either way. Nothing's an excuse if you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> That's my motto in life. All right. So I think I'm going to mess around with some wings first for a little bit. I'm going to be breaking out some different stencils. I think today is going to primarily be the regular reptile skin stencils to get some like bigger chunk effects on here. And then next week, when I start getting down into like the, the tiny detail, I'm going to be using the smaller uh, reptile skin stencils for areas like around here and tiny little areas. But for now, I'm just kind of focusing on like big, big picture stuff. Your friend uh, Richard goes, hey, good afternoon to you. What's a motto? <laughs> a motto? Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. That's just what he's asking. A motto? I don't know. You mean like my personal motto in like, life? Do we have a motto? Does, do we have a motto? Does Fallout Hobbies have one? Was I not briefed on this one? I'm confused. I'm sorry, Rich. I'm confused. But our question of the live stream today is, what is the craziest, silliest, most ridiculous Christmas present you've either sent or received? That's a good one. And he means, what's a motto with you? Like, personal reference. Oh, a, a motto with me? Like, what's my personal motto? Just surviving and survive another day? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Live to tell the tale? I think that's probably my, uh... If it doesn't kill you, it'll just make you crankier. That's a good one. Actually, a new one that I love that my therapist told me, which was funny, was um, in reference to people that are constantly making comments and criticism, but they're mostly wrong. But once in a while, they're right. And my therapist was like, even a broken clock is correct two times a day, which I thought was amazing. That's, that's some sage words of wisdom right there. That's pretty true. I like friendship is not a noun, it's a verb. Mm -hmm. Because your actions actually are more important than, yes. you know, what you say. This is true. Very true. All right, I am mixing up a little bit of uh, day glow yellow here. Because I think what I'm going to do 
You should show everybody like the little pots of day glow you've got going on because you can't well, see it on camera. Right? I moved some of it off camera. It was on camera before. So can you hand me my laptop again? <laughs> Sorry. Yep. So for the wings, see how this tree frog is kind of like yellowish and greenish and then has like the dark blue speckles and stuff over it? I'm kind of going to do that with the wings. I'm going to I'm going to paint some neon green yellow and then I'm going to blend in a little bit of orange and stuff like that and get like a really col colorful wing and then I'm going to put the reptile skin stencil over it and hit it with some darker colors and see how see how it all works out. Is this cuz you wanted to play with the black light? I always want to play with the black light. That's already looking cool. But. That is cool looking. This is not like a specific brand of airbrush paint or anything. I just bought like a multi-pack of acrylic paint off of Amazon. So it might have, you know, mixed results when, when thinned down and airbrushing. I'm definitely going to need to do a couple coats to really get the kind of effect I'm going for here. But so far, it's layering nicely. <laughs> Richard said the silliest Christmas gift for him might be this year's for a couple of friends, uh, and it's going to be sending them bags of small dicks that oh. screw onto tire valve stems so they can express their opinions whenever they see idiot drivers in the parking lot. That's kind of great. Yeah, that's what I was telling you about last night, babe. I was telling you he was 3D printing a bunch of dicks for bags of dicks. Why not? <laughs> and that it's perfect. I love that. That's awesome. It's like my favorite phrase. I constantly... Jules, tell him. How often do I say... That's a whole new bag of dicks. Probably like three times a day. It's practically his motto. It is my motto. That's my motto. There. That's my motto. And he says, geez, that's an insane green. Well, I have the black light on it right now, so it's really amping it up. Also, I pre-prepped, like if I turn the black light off, it doesn't look as intense see it looks more like muted it's really the black lights pumping it up but i also primered this with um uh, a purple blue fade just to add like another layer of texture because i'm going for like a very organic uh effect here so the most ridiculous Christmas gift I've ever sent, I think, besides like the one year I made roasted nuts for everybody, it's like my homemade gift or whatever. Roasted nuts. I did, because we used to have a, a tree. So and I you gave everyone them. a sack of nuts. That's how much I appreciated my ex husband's family. <laughs> No, uh, this year I, my oldest son, Alex, who is 18 going on 45, we've been having a difference of opinions about COVID and precautions and generally life because I think, you know, kids at that age think you're stupid. Um, and, and that kind of doesn't change until they turn 25. So he most recently got a job working at Subway instead of waiting till COVID is earlier because, you know, 
it was absolutely, I guess, quintessential and necessary right now. So I got him a gift card to Subway <laughs> for Christmas. Because I'm mean like that. It was a mean gift. It was funny, though. I think maybe he'll appreciate the humor by the time he's 25. I mean, like, after he's, like, knocked down a couple notches in life? When we can actually have, like, a beer together and he's legal enough to do so? Yeah. yeah. When life has sufficiently smacked him around a little bit. Like Thursday Night Smackdown. Hmm. Speaking of SmackDown, do you want to tell everybody what we did last night? Oh, uh, Egyptian Rat Screw? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a fun game. It is fun. It right? is a absolutely ridiculous card game. There's a lot of slapping involved. There is a lot of slapping involved. It's when... like an insane amount of asinine rules and then slapping. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Wednesday nights are date night, so we try and do something utterly ridiculous or fun or just take time to connect because I think that's important, especially during COVID. Any card game where, like, one of the rules is if there's three sixes in a row, you have to burn the deck at midnight is pretty ridiculous. Yeah. That is one of the rules of Egyptian rack screw. Mm hmm I thought, I, I thought you slapped three sixes. I thought I was going to have to burn the card deck. No, that was a nine, a six, a nine. Mm-hmm. That was really fun, though. So this uh, this paint that I'm using is pretty thin. Uh, so meaning I'm definitely doing a lot of passes with it to really build up the uh, opacity on it. I'll be done with the green soon-ish. I just want to make sure it's nice and built up before I move on to the next colors. This paint is not, uh, it's thinning well enough to airbrush, but it's not like as smooth as a paint that was designed for airbrushing. So there's a little bit of chalkiness, I guess, would be the, the only way I would describe it, but it, it's working. So they're just like generic, kind of like day glow paints? Yeah, I just literally Google, uh, not Googled, but in the Amazon search, just typed in, you know, acrylic um, fluorescent paint set or something to that effect. It was like, it was like 12 bucks or something. It was just a cheap, because I was using this for a different project. And, like, Vallejo makes pretty good um, UV paints. I forgot what I originally bought these paints for. I think I bought them for, like, a, like a kid's craft project or something. I can't, I can't remember fully. Were they called neon lights? Maybe. I don't know. They come in a white box. Look, here, this is the white box. It's just called Black Map Artistry. Black Map Artistry UV Reactive Acrylic Neon Fluorescent Paint Set. Six colors. That's Ooh, it. There is a QR code. There is a QR code. I know you <laughs> love this. <laughs> no. Ooh. Okay, so... I 
Okay, so this green's starting to take effect. I'm going to I'm going to start mixing up the colors a little bit here. Clear out this airbrush. And I'll mix in some actually Oh, they have like a really trippy space background on their website. These black map of artistry guys. It's moving. Yeah, I posted a link, you guys, for the paint that he's using. If you, too, would like to play with black lights and uh, UV reactive paint, here you go. That's really fun. Look. <laughs> yeah. It's, this is fun. It's fun to do. Let's break out another color. Let me clear I the am, airbrush out. I am really, really sore. From all the shoveling? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're banged up. It was a lot of shoveling today. The worst part is because I'm like so short. Like when there's like 18 inches of snow, <laughs> it's like up my calves. <laughs> Hit this back with the green in a minute. From overspray? Yeah, I kind of, I, I gotta, I want to bring a little bit more of the green back in, but I definitely wanted this like uh, reddish color towards the bottom here.
I might need to do two passes on this color because it's um, supposed to be more pinkish. You know what, I have pure pink right here, so why not I just do that? I'm breaking out every color right now, pretty much. <laughs> just having fun. Trying to get like a toxic tree frog look, kind of. These paints are very um, opaque, though, which is nice. They have a lot of pigment in them. Oh. Yeah, it's not, it's, it looks more pink in the cup, but when it sprays, it's like an orange. It's more orange, yeah. Just try, oh, see, now I see some of the pink coming out. All right. I mean, that's, that's a pretty cool pattern right there. I'm giving this a minute to dry because there's a lot of uh that video does not give it justice it's way cooler under the black light in it, it's pretty neon in front of us it's kind of blinding actually yeah it's kind of like blurry see doesn't quite do it yeah the contrast isn't it, the contrast in real life is better you can make out the the color separations better I'm going to do another round of green because I want to make sure that the green always sticks out. Wow, that yellow really makes it hot. It's a pretty wild scheme going on right now. Yeah, I think you should totally take pictures so 
they can see what it actually looks like in a photograph versus video. Oh yeah. After. Alright, I really need to let this rest because there's some pretty heavy wet spots on it. There's a little bit of tidal markings from areas where it got a little bit wet. So I need to let that rest for a few moments before I can do anything. Well, you know what? Since this is resting, I'll just paint some of these guys. Start painting some base colors on these guys. Because I'm not going to be able to apply any stencils until all that paint is fully dried. Otherwise, it's just going to be a mess. Be a mess and peel it right off. In fact, I'm wondering if I should spray a layer of clear coat on that before I do the stencil work because this paint's a little bit more delicate. What time do we have right now? It's 128, but like, you know, just go with it. It's a snow day. Mm -hmm. Scything talons. Look at that scything talent. It's really cool. Sorry, <laughs> I just felt making some noises. <laughs> Rich says, these colors are insane, love them. Not sure how many projects I could use them for, but I think I'm going to need a set just in case. <laughs> They're fun. Yeah. They're fun to just have around. It's kind of amazing how different they look once you turn the light off, though. They look a lot more muted. Mm -hmm. Just always leave the light on.
I mean, these pinks still look pretty pink even without the black light. There was this guy, Alan, that I knew in Philly. He was older. He was like in his 60s when I met him. And he used to run this um, um, theater group that did all blacklight performances. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, it was really cool because all of his stuff looked like African tribal, but in blacklight. That's and he really... would make all these, he would make all the robes and the masks and stuff like that. And what, did, what was it called? Dream Theater. Hmm. Yeah. Nice. I'm pretty sure that's what it was called. No, Archidream. Archidream. Archidream? Yeah. It. Ooh. Arc a dream for humankind. A visually no, I don't want to give out my email address. Captivating Blacklight Mask and Dance Theater Company. Yep, that's it. That's my friend Alan. So I'd go over his house and he'd have all these crazy, crazy, crazy ass like costumes and projects and stuff out because he lived in this like um what used to be like an 1800s fire station in philly so it, it was a it was like a carriage house that was converted into apartments was he like trying to live out like ghostbusters it was cooler looking than that it was like 1800s style or like the third one with the chicks where they had like the place that was like in the firehouse well he had members of his group living with him and he always had the loft room, the very top, that overlooked everything. So it was like a black light commune? Yeah. <laughs> they were all hippies. They all had dreads. Well, he didn't. He was bald. But uh, everyone else was like hippies with dreads and stuff, making black light stuff. And always a ton of good art books around. So I meant to ask you, speaking of dreadlocks, would you be opposed, since we're in the middle of, like, COVID, and going to a hairdresser is not possible? How would you feel like if I just, like, let it all hang out and went back to dreadlocks? I don't think I'd care too much. Okay. I'm going to start getting some of this, or should I do this, get some of this blue in here involved. The blue is an interesting one because it's not as, oh, I didn't clean out the previous color. They still have the black light commune. Could you imagine if you're going through COVID how much fun that would be? Well, Archidream still does performances and stuff like that. Mm. Have a black light quarantine. I mean, there was always like two or three people from his group that lived at the house with them.
This is a very vibrant blue. Oh, this paint takes forever to dry. I just smudged it by accident. Again. Damn it. I'm so used to like Vallejo paint, which dries really quickly that like I kind of didn't think about this. So I'm not even sure if I'll be able to get to stencils today because there's still like wet spots happening on some of these things. And if I apply the stencils, it'll just, it'll just yeah. peel all the paint right off. So what I might do is... Do you want me to grab my hair dryer from next door? No, no. What, I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint for a little bit more, a bunch of different colors, and then I'm going to let them really dry. Right. And then next week, we'll start doing stencil work on it. Are we doing a live stream next week? You do realize what Thursday is next oh, week. Oh, that's right. That's Christmas Eve. Well, we could do a live stream on, like, Tuesday or something. We could. We could switch it up and do one on a different day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, folks, I'm just going to paint for another like uh, 10, 15 minutes and just experiment with some colors here. And then I'm going to really let it dry, do some touch-ups if I need to, and hit it with a layer of clear coat and make sure all of that is dry before I apply the stencils because this paint is a lot more delicate, I'm realizing as I'm working with it, a lot more delicate than um, like hobby paint would be. And I don't want to run the risk of chipping and screwing a lot of stuff up. Wow, that's really cool looking. I like how the blue goes into like the purple and then it makes this like muddy kind of like brown skin tone. Yeah, that's I think what I was just realizing when I was doing that. That's going to look neat. Neat. One last color I haven't used yet was this kind of turquoise. I think I'm going to put a layer of that over top of the blue to just kind of add some highlights. Ooh, like green and turquoise. Yeah, it's got some blue in it though.
but it really just pumps that blue up nicely. Oh yeah, that looks cool. Well, spitting here, sorry about that. Ah, <laughs> almost fell right into the paint there. Yeah, that's cool. That's like an aquamarine when it's mm -hmm. all on there like that. Yeah, I really think you should take some pictures of it under the black light though, so people can really see it and appreciate it because you really can't tell on the video. Oh, I will. When it's all said and done, I'll do a really nice photo shoot with it. I gotta actually gather up a couple of the models that we've been doing recently in videos. There was that ornithopter thing that I did. Flappy flap? The flappy flap. There was the Cthulhu figure I was painting. I gotta take like a day a day or two and just like spend that you know hour that I need to spend on each one of those kits to like finish it off so I could make some nice display kits out of them the flappy flap That's this. I'm loving this aquamarine effect here. This would actually be a really good effect for people that are playing Alpha Legion because their army is kind of like a blue to green fade. Yeah. Which is why that Turbo Door color Twin Sun sold out like in a week. Oh, yeah. We got to order more of that. Because that Turbo Door color is like the perfect Alpha Legion color. Right. Because they were Afarius and Omegon are the twin brothers of the Alpha Legion. That's why the paint is called Twin Suns. And it's like the blue-green color. I love their paint names. They're just so fun. Mm -hmm. Let them eat cake and silver fox and purple people eaters. Well, we know you like silver foxes. Very true. I married one. It's <laughs> just begging for a compliment. <laughs> oh yeah, that's gonna be cool. Now I'm also curious, and one thing I need to wait until these are dry. I want to use some Citadel contrast colors to help kind of pump up the shadows of it. So I'm curious how the contrast colors will affect it too but I really want to like give all these black light colors like a layer of um like a clear coat before I do any kind of like effects or paint or or, or uh, washes I mean or anything so like that it? yeah I want to really seal them in before I start applying more stuff on top of them you know mm -hmm. Let me just break out the orange again to do some of these harder armor panels on the figure.
According to the rules of nature, this guy definitely screams out, I'm poisonous, don't eat me. <laughs> According to the rules of insects and crustaceans with color coding, you know? Mm. Is that why Donald Trump has, like, the bright neon orange hair? <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> that was a bad one. I did find out that the city that I used to work in, Atlantic City, is auctioning off the rights to, to uh, push the button on the demolition explosions that will level one of Trump's outdated casinos. But the cool thing is, doesn't it all go to charity? It all goes to charity, yeah. yeah. So if there is someone rich in the tri-state area that really hated Donald Trump, they could donate, you know, like a million bucks or whatever to this charity and blow up uh, one of Donald Trump's casinos. What did they do? The Boys and Girls Club? Boys and Girls Club, yeah, of South Jersey. Oh, cool. So. I think that's kind of funny. I appreciate that. All right, well, I think that's probably where I'm going to call it for this week's video because... These all need some time to dry, and I do need to do some touch-ups, like I, I smudged this wing right here, and I smudged the horn up here, but I want to make sure everything is kind of dry before I hit it up with another layer, because I'm noticing I'm creating some tidal marks from too much moisture, so I can, I can fix all that. That's not a big deal, but I kind of want to let everything rest for a little bit before I um, get into the next layer. So in between now and the next video, which will be early next week, what I'm gonna do is kind of touch up all those aspects that got screwed up. And I'm gonna clear coat it very well. And I'm going to uh, prepare it for doing some stencil work because what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use the reptile skin stencil over the wings to add some extra texture there. And I'm gonna use the infantry size reptile skin stencil to add some texture to like the soft areas, like the, like the tail and stuff. So that's gonna be the next video. And then after all the stenciling and stuff, I'll pick out a couple highlights. And I also, if you guys remember Avatar, the, the Navi, um, were blue, but they had these like glowing white dots going down their face and like down their legs and stuff. And I really liked that. So I'm probably going to pick up one more UV color, like a white UV or bright UV. And I'm going to paint little like dots on some areas of the, of the body. Oh, that's cool. So it looks like there's like glowing, you know, stuff. Like I'll paint like little trails of dots down the tail and stuff. Nice. To really like pop it. Pop it. And I'm probably going to paint the claws dark. With the exception of the big like scything talons. I'm going to paint the rest of the claws and everything dark. So it kind of um, doesn't overtake the uh, glowing of the skin and whatnot. So that's, that's where I'm at for right now. So tune in for the next video, which will be in a few days, and there'll be more progress on this, and we'll have some fun. And if there's still more to do, I might even make it a third video, depending on how long, how much I get done in the next video. Alrighty, well, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Peace.